Hello, this is Tom from Trifold Productions with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can simulate and generate a street scene in Blender with cars and working lights, uh, grass and trees and so on and so forth uh, by using the Next Street add-on. It's not free, you have to pay for it. It's around $36, uh, but for what it can do, that's not too bad. Only issue with it is that I've seen is that it only works in 3.6 and that's pretty much it. Doesn't work in any, any other version of Blender. I'm using 3.61. I'll leave a link of it below the video so you can download it yourself and check it out. But the installation process is still the same. Just go to edit. Preferences. Uh, click on install. Navigate where you've downloaded the zip file. Click on that zip file. Click on install add-on. I'm going to type in next right here. Uh, put check in the box and it's activated. And then you're ready and set to go. And it's on the right hand side of the UI, the tool panel. So you just left click there. And it's right here. It's just a small or a simple button, but it expands into different parameters for making the street in Blender. And it's pretty cool too. Let me delete this cube. And to start the process for the street, just have to click on Add Street. And there you go. There's our street. Now it's pretty basic from the onset. Um, but as we continue to look through the parameters and the settings, we'll find out we can do a lot more with it. Now this, keep in mind with the add-on is that when you want to make changes to your street, you have to stay on the Bezier curve. If we tab out of edit mode, because it's in edit mode right now, just go into just object mode. If you try to make any changes to it by using the uh, buttons or the parameters on this side, it's not going to work. So make sure you're in edit mode by pressing tab and then make sure that this bezier curve in the middle is highlighted with as white and then your sets. Now it's got a lot of cool features to it. We're just going to jump, jump to as many as we can. I probably won't go into everything, but I'll try to cover as much as possible. Um, to expand the streets, all you have to do is click on the one, right now it's in edge select mode, so click on this icon vertex select, or vertex, or vertices, I don't know the singular pronunciation of that, or pronunciation of that, but just click on that first icon there, click on your move gizmo, and just click on the point, and just press E to extrude, and then there you go, you can just left click and drag on the um, Y axis and pull over to the Z axis too and that's how you can edit your streets you can actually expand it too, you can make like a crossroads here left click on that center port press E to extrude again left click to accept that change and left click and drag on the X axis which is the red arrow there we have our cross streets which is cool now this renders in EV and in cycles but cycles looks a lot better. So let's change our viewport rendering here. Let's left click on our, our render properties there. Turn from EV to cycles. If you have a, trong, a strong enough uh, graphics card on your system, you can turn this from CPU to GPU. Let's change our world settings too, that we can, so we can see what it looks like in a natural blue light sky kind of texture. So we're going to click on the color tab here. Left click in there, pull up to white, lighter color. Click on the blue area, have our blue color there, and let's click on our this icon to change the viewport rendering. And it shouldn't take too long. There we go, that's our streets. And it's got working lights. And one thing you have to, that is cool about that on is that when it comes to the street lights and the lights on the traffic lights and cars, they all work. So that's cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now you can see how it's textured in Blender with the asphalt and the sidewalks uh, but just for the sake of this tutorial we're going to go back into the object mode in the viewport so we can just kind of not lag in our viewport there so I'm going to click on this icon right here and we're going to go through some of the settings now the first option we have here to optimize our scene so we can hide assets in the viewport if they're too much they cause our scene to lag and hide some assets in it and the cool thing about the camera calling is pretty awesome is it's just top-notch stuff and I'll show you how camera calling works when I start to populate the scene here 
Now let's click on, uh, go back to edge select and click on our bezier curve there. And what we're going to do is click on the next option, which is sidewalk properties. It has a lot of uh, options or presets for sidewalks. Let's left click on that icon there. You can have trees and benches. You zoom up here, scroll up, I guess, a plain sidewalk. A sidewalk with grass, you know, trash cans, benches, uh, stop signs or street signs, regular signs. So it's got all these options. Let's, let's click on one. And then it adds that to our scene. As you can see, it only added it to this section. Let's minimize this. Added it to this section of our scene because this is the bezier curve that's been highlighted. So any editing that we're going to do uh, in this panel here is going to affect only this section here. If you want to edit this part of it, that's that's the cool thing about customizing your streets with this add-on because you can customize individual sections of the street. All the, the whole street doesn't have to look the same. So to customize this part, just left click on that and then click on your uh, options there, your presets there. Let's change it to just just bench, a trash can and grass. Left click on that and, and we have that option applied to that side of the street. So that's, that's pretty cool. Now you can uh, actually, let's go back to our first Bezier curve. And let's reposition our window here so we can see what's going on here. We can have our tree, we have our trees here and our stop signs here. And we can just change that to just a guardrail if we want to. It does automatically. That has no presets. It's just guardrails or click on none. And it turns it to none. But let's go back to sidewalk because that looks pretty nice. Our next option in terms of customizing our street would be, let's uh, expand that street profile. Left click on that. Now this uh, affects the amount of cars we want in our scene. If we left click on that, it gives us four preset options here. Two cars, four cars, six car lanes, or eight car lanes. And these go, you know, this could probably, this goes on both sides of your streets. One going in this direction and the other going in the opposite direction. So you can have uh, all these cars in your scene. And the cool thing about this, once again, is that it populates the cars automatically. Once you click on simulate, you have everything set up. You can uh, press simulation, and then it just automatically applies cars with working headlights and stoplights driving on the streets. And the cars actually stop. They actually stop at the at these little um, stoplights. Because these work too. These turn from red to yellow to green. And the cars, they pretty much, uh, like it does in, in this life, they pretty much just obey the traffic stops. They'll stop at red and then go on green. So that is pretty, It's it's. Uh, that's why I say for $36, this isn't, this isn't that bad. This is really nice. And our next option here, we're going to skip simulation for at, at this point. Just let's go through all the uh, other options that we have here. Oh, intersection. That also is something you can uh, adjust because right now we have an intersection here in the middle. And we can click on this option there to change the way the intersection looks to make it look a little bit, uh, I guess, better. If we're, if we're not pleased with the way it looks at this point in time, just click on intersection, traffic lights, toggle, and that will fix that. You can switch it from uh, left hand driving, from right to left hand driving. If depends on depending on what uh, part of the world you're you know wanting to depict. I know in Europe, London, they drive on the left side of the street, so this also simulates that, which is cool. And our next option before simulation or after simulation is texturing. We click on that. You have um, options in terms of if you want the street to be wet or have snow on the streets. And I'm going to, let's, let's see how that looks. Hopefully, um, Blender won't crash. But let's just give it, give it a shot here. Let's left click on our uh, render option there. We have our uh, street selected here. And we want to click in here to see how it looks with water on it. So let's bump this up to like maybe 0.5, enter. And then we want to increase our water height. Left click in there. 
let's turn this to probably one enter let's see what that looks like and you can see from just bumping up the water height all the way up now we have some sheen or some shine oh that's the my alarm clock on my phone let's stop that you can see that the streets is now saturated with water if we put this down to 0.5 also it becomes a little bit less saturated you can see patches of water on the sidewalk as opposed to the whole area being covered with water even patches of water on the streets so that's nice let's turn this back to zero enter zero enter and let's check out the snow let's bump this up to 0.5 also enter have a little bit of snow there but the snow spread let's see how that looks have like a couple of patches of snow here and there let's put the spread to one enter and now we have more snow on the streets so yeah this this is very very responsive and it simulates you know rain water on the streets and snow very well actually so let's uh put this back to zero enter this also the spread to zero enter and now the last thing we want to look at is the simulation no simulation and camera calling those are the two the two want to look at right now let's turn our viewport back to object mode so that way it doesn't slow down our rendering our, our simulation and when we click on simulation we can let me see it says calculate frames and that so on and so forth and I think if I'm not mistaken you just press play to see what the simulation looks like so let's press play on our keyboard yeah see when you when you see this purple line it means it's trying to simulate traffic in the scene and there are the cars there's one car that stopped at this oh, there's another one this is like you're playing on the uh, with a train set or something and it's got headlights they've got headlights attached to them automatically you have trucks in it different kinds of cars and SUVs you can set the duration of the simulation also the car density so on and so forth the cars light color all that you can uh, set according to the way you want it to look and now the the interesting part with this is the camera calling and the word calling means you're wanting to only um because with blender blender has an issue where if you're trying to render something in the scene it seems to render everything that's even outside of the camera even if the camera is not it's supposed to just render something that's in the view of the camera but with blender what it seems to do which they have to fix hopefully sometime soon is that even if you're whatever you're looking at isn't in in the viewport of your camera it'll still render it which would increase the render time but with camera calling what that does is that this is going to just minimize everything in the scene to just the view of the camera so i'm going to go to seven to get my top view and i'm going to get out of edit mode because i want to move my camera because my camera's right there so i'm going to go tab out of edit mode click on my camera left click on that click on my move gizmo left click and drag on the y axis uh, let me click on one so I can make sure that the camera is looking at the right thing okay that's that's right and we're going to click on our street again and then go back into edit mode by pressing tab and I'm going to go to optimization click on camera calling click on my eye drop and click on my camera and see what happens now it looks like everything is gone pretty much out of the scene but watch what happens when I move my camera around. Let me click on the move gizmo here. Oh, let me get out of edit mode again. Tab out of edit mode. Click on my camera and just rotate this by pressing R. And you can see, look at that. Look in this area over here. Because this is where the camera is looking. Wherever the camera is looking is what it's going to render out, which you're going to see in the viewport or in the camera itself. So when I press R for rotation on my keyboard and I move my camera around, let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see it better. R, it just shows in the viewport what's in the camera view. And that's what's going to render. That's going to speed up our rendering when it comes time to render out our scene, which is very, 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 very helpful, especially in Blender. And especially if you don't have a computer 
uh, that is strong enough to render uh, fast enough. This helps a lot. So yeah, that's that's today's uh, Blender quick tip. The next street add-on, and it's pretty cool. Um, so hopefully you guys will download it and try it out for yourselves, and it'll help with your simulations and renders in Blender. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, and thanks you guys for watching. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.